Hello everyone, here we have come to the very last of our course and the last topic that we have is finite state machines. Now before we go on to discuss about finite state machines, uh, we have already learned about combinational and sequential circuits. The combinational circuits are like uh, those who have uh, logic functions if we recall to suppose a bar b plus b c b bar these things. And sequential circuit has a distinct feature that is it has a clock involved and another distinct feature is in case of sequential circuit the change in output depends on the clock and change in output may depend on the input uh, what do i mean by that suppose uh, we are considering a counter we are con considering a counter which is an example of a sequential circuit now what happens is suppose uh, uh, we have only started the counting then at the first clock edge the counting would be first clock edge the counting the count would be one at the next clock edge count would be two next clock edge three next four now at this point suppose the count is four at this point what does the next count depend on next count depends on the clock because as long as we do not find the clock edge the count will not change again next count uh, next count depends on the present state that is 4 because next count will be 5 that is if the present state was 2 next count was 3 if the pre now present state is 4 next count is 5 so the uh, the output in case of the sequential circuit depends on the clock and the state uh, again, the outputs can be dependent on inputs as well in different uh, different examples. Uh, suppose we have to design a circuit of which uh, uh, it will sample an input D uh, at every clock cycle. And if two consecutive Ds are 1, then uh, the output will be 1. So, suppose the first digit that took, uh, first, D, first D was 0 at first clock cycle, then D was 0 again, then it was 1, 0. In the next clock cycle, D was 1, and again at the next clock cycle, D was 1. If this is the case, in this clock cycle, there are two consecutive ones, so output will be 1. In all the previous cases, where are the outputs were 0. So here, the output is firstly dependent on the present input, which is 1, and output is also dependent on the state, the state of the previous input being 1. So the output is both dependent on the state and the and the inputs. So these type of sequential circuits have uh, uh, another name which is called the finite state machine. Now finite state machine are of two types. Uh, Moore type machine na named after uh, Edward Moore and Mealy type machine named after George Mealy. Uh, Moore type machine is the machine in which the output is dependent on only the state and not the input. An example of this Moore type machine would be say counter. The counter output is dependent on the state. If the present state is 1, next output is 2. If the present state is 10, next output is 11. So these type of machines are Moore type machines. That is the output is dependent only on the states. In case of Mealy time machines, the output is not only dependent on state but also dependent on present input. Uh, in the previous slides, uh, the example that we posed that if two, we have two consecutive ones, in case of second one, our output will become one. So here, uh, what, what happened is the output is dependent on the present input, which is one, and output is dependent on the previous input, that is output is dependent on, pre dependent on previous state as well. So it's not only dependent on state, it also de depends on input, this type of machine are called mealy machine. In our real life problems, uh, we have we encounter the, both of these machines. That is, our output might depend on state, and it might or might not depend on input. One thing is for sure: uh, in case of finite state machine, generally the outputs are actually all, uh, almost always dependent on state. Uh, whether it depends on the input as well or not uh, differentiates the more type machine from the media type machine. Now, let us look at an example of Moore type machine. 
Suppose we wish to design a circuit that meets the following specification. The circuit has one input W and one output Z. We have one input and one output. All the changes in circuit occur at the positive edge of clock. The output Z is equal to 1 if during two immediately preceding clock cycles the input W was equal to 1. Otherwise the value of Z is equal to 0. Z is equal to 1 if two immediately preceding clock cycles have the value 1. That is, if we look at the input output combinations, we can see that here 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. In this case, two clock cycles have 1, uh, 1 as output, but we see 1 as input. We see here the output is not equal to 1. The output becomes 1 here. Because here the two clock cycles before them had the output of uh, had the input of one. Similarly, here two clock cycles before this had inputs of one. Here two two clock cycles before this had input of one. So the language of the question is very important. Two immediately preceding clock cycles means two clock cycles of the past. So it, it is dependent on the past states and not the present value. Uh, it is clear from this uh, this thing as well. Here the output is 1 but the input is 0. Here the output is 1, input is 0. But here output is 1, input is also 1. So output is not dependent on input. So this is a uh, present input. So this is a move type machine. So to design any machine, we design the machine using uh, programming language, say Verilog or VHDL or we can design the machine using sequential circuits as well. To design a machine, the first step is to design a state diagram or draw a state diagram. If our state diagram is correct, it is very easy to design the uh, design the machine in coding. We can do that in Verilog or any other programming language, and it is very easy to design the machine using circuits as well, logic circuits as well. So let us look at the state diagram. So in the state diagram, we have an initial state call the zeroth state is zero. This is the state which is operational when reset has been imposed. That is if the reset button of the circuit is pressed, it will move to state zero. Now what we want to do, what do we want to do? We want uh, the output to be one in two immediately preceding clock cycles. That is in two continuous clock cycles, we want the output to be one. So, our if from here, if let us, uh, it is given input is W, if W is equal to 1, we go on to the next stage which is closer to, closer to the output and if W is equal to 1 again, we go, go on to the next stage, S2. So, at S2, in the stage S2, the previous input was 1, the input before that was also 1. So in, in the stage S2, Z is equal to 1. In all the other states, Z is equal to 0. So this does not, uh, this is for our understanding. This is, it is not necessary to write this here. So our output stage is the state S2. Now, from if state, input can be either 1 or 0. So, from state 0, if the input is 1, we move on to state 1. But what if the input is 0? If the input is 0, we need two ones one after another. So, here, if the input is 0, we actually do not move forward. We again come back to the same place. That is initial state. Again, at S1, if output input is equal to, at S1 we already have 1 as input, as previous input and now if the input is 1 we reach state 2 which will have 1 1 as previous input but if the input is 0 we have 1 0 so in the next cycle we will have a preceding 0 and no preceding 1 so we will again move to the initial state so we will get W at w is equal to 0, we'll move, the, move it again back to 0. Similarly, in state 2, we have already preceding two ones. If we get 0, if w is equal to 0 or input, when we are at state 2, if the input is 0, 
then what happens is in the next cycle we will not get a preceding one and as a result it will be we will have to move to state 0 but in this case in S2 we have already one one there if we get another one if the input is one then what happens in the next next clock cycle we will have two ones one after another so if we get input is equal to one will remain at state 2 itself so this diagram is called the state diagram so how can we uh, now since we have drawn the state diagram let us look how we can implement it in the code so i am writing just the logic of the code so logic is if present state is equal to s0 then we will have if w is equal to 0 we remain we the re present state remains at s0 else present state becomes s1 this is the logic for s0 again if present state is equal to s1 then if w is equal to 0 present state remains s0 else present state is equal to s2 if w is equal to 1 present state becomes s2 now in case of s2 if present state if we are at s2 at this moment if w is equal to 0 we have present state is sorry ps present state is equal to s0 else present state is equal to it remains in state 2 so s2 so this is this is the actual algorithm of the code uh, algorithm if we want to uh, if we want to design this machine using a programming or using a code so we can see that once the state diagram is drawn it is very easy to design a circuit like this and the state diagrams is really necessary state diagram actually indicates how the circuit is going to work let us design the same problem but this time the process is MIDI so we are converting the same problem into a MIDI problem how do we do that we have one input and one output and the changes in the circuit occur at positive edge of the clock and now it is stated that the output z is equal to 1 if during two immediate clock cycles the input w is equal to 1 see the language the language is very important here we are stated it is stated that if in two immediate clock cycles input is 1 then output becomes 1 that is output becomes 1 as long as in the second second consecutive clock cycle the input has been 1 so here we can see these two cases in the consecutive cycle inputs were 1 and as soon as the second input is 1 the output became 1 here too as soon as the second input became 1 output became 1 here too so the logic is a uh, logic is same only just the language is different in case of more it was stated in two uh, immediately uh, preceding clock cycles that is from this clock cycle two immediately preceding ones and in case of more we have two immediate clock cycles that is the previous one and this one okay now let us draw the straight diagram the state diagram can be the uh, say uh, can be drawn as same as for the uh, same for more and mealy and we can change the logic or we can do it in this way we have our state 0 which is our which is basically our base state uh, we go with, uh, when we put reset we come here from that if we have w is equal to 1 we we move to state 1 and we store z is equal to 0 from there we get if we get w is equal to 1 we remain in state 1 but we store z is equal to 1 if in this case w is equal to 0 we move back to state 0 and z, we put z is equal to 0 again at a 0 if w is equal to 0 we set z is equal to 0 so this is the new this is the new state diagram so here what we are doing it is, this is a new approach in drawing the state diagram uh, the state diagram of Moore and Billy are basically the same but here we are just uh, 
showing a new process or new approach in designing the state diagram. So at the, from the initial stage, if w is equal to 1, we have just 1, 1 here and z remains 0. If w is again equal to 1, then we store z is equal to 1 and yes, uh, the present state still remains at s1. If at this, in this case w becomes 0, then we store z is equal to 0 and the present state moves to s0. So the if you want to implement in the code, logic would be if present state is equal to s0, then if w is equal to 1, if w is equal to 1, present state is equal to s1, z is equal to 0, else if w is equal to 0, present state is equal to s0, z is equal to 0. Again, if present state is equal to s1, then if w is equal to 1, present state becomes remains s1, but z is equal to 1, and if w is equal to 0, present state goes back to s0, and z is equal to 0. So this is the algor algorithm or the logic employed in uh, realizing this state diagram. So we can say we can very easily convert a state diagram into a code or into a circuit. So in case of media or move machine, we it is very important that we draw the state diagram correctly. And whether the machine is a melee machine or a move machine depends actually depends on the state diagram, how the state diagram is with uh, the this, uh, 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 or it actually depends on how the problem statement is. The language of the problem statement thus becomes very important. That's all for this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll be learning about uh, some examples of state diagrams so that we have a more clear about uh, clear idea about state diagrams. Thank you so much.